Welcome to New Mexico Restaurants Now, where we get you the inside scoop on the food scene across New Mexico. This episode is brought to you by NMRA's Chef's Table Sponsors. These businesses provide the most generous level of support to help our restaurants keep protected, informed, and successful. So thank you to Benny Keith Foods, the Food Industry Self-Insurance Fund, Heartland Payment Systems, Shamrock Foods, Cisco New Mexico, and U.S. Foods. We would not be here without you. I'm Carol White, CEO of the New Mexico Restaurant Association, and our guest today is Chris Silesiak, the owner of both the Melting Pot and Burger 21 in Uptown Albuquerque. These restaurants are on opposite ends of the restaurant spectrum. So let's start by talking about how you, Chris, came to be in the restaurant industry. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, You know, since I was a kid, I always loved buying and selling things. I, I was that kid that always had a lemonade stand. And I just, and my grandfather in Chicago had a produce store. And he taught us how to do arithmetic by running his cash registers. So I've always just loved buying and selling in the customer interaction. I was in retail um, as a buyer for many years, 13 years. And then I felt I learned enough after that, that I got married and my partner and I decided, because he was from Albuquerque, to do a restaurant. And we happened to go to the melting pot in St. Louis. We loved it. And uh, my partner at the time said, hey, this is what we should do in Albuquerque. And I said, there's no way this is a franchise. There's no way we'd be able to do that. How are we ever going to get the money to do it? And we did. So, I mean, other people's money, right? Um, but in 2002, after, after working a couple of years on it, we opened the melting pot in Old Town. That's right. Yes, that's where it was. I, I kept, I was trying to remember where it was because I, I've gone there for years um, my girls, they absolutely adore it. And so anytime we had a birthday or something special, some special occasion, we would go to the melting pot. And, and today I was trying to think, where was that first one? So yeah, good. So, um, so and then just recently you, you walked into a Burger 21. T- tell me about that experience. What happened? So, you know, I realized over the years that one restaurant is not enough. You know, you need to have a portfolio that's diversified. And depending on one thing, you know, one restaurant for your income is just not enough. And I wanted to use my skill set in something else. So there's two brothers that own the melting pot, Mark and Bob Johnston. They realized the same thing. And so they started Burger 21 to be the opposite end of the spectrum from melting pot. So melting pot is borderline fine dining, experience oriented, two hour dining experience. Um, it's, pre, it's pre-bought, it's you know, and to your point, a lot of people come to the melting pot to celebrate. That's what we're known for. Burger 21 is totally different. Uh, we are a fashionable modern version of quick service. So the brothers came up with this concept that is fresh ingredients made to order gourmet burger experience at not a gourmet price in a modern, fresh, fun atmosphere. And so you could have lunch at Burger 21 in Winrock, and then you could have dinner to celebrate your birthday anniversary at Melting Pot across the street. And the theory is kind of maybe when one's business is up and trending, the other one's not as hot, and then they sort of play off of each other. And quite frankly, except for alcohol, they do the same volume. It's totally, totally different time frames, right? And same sort of customer profile. Um, but anyway, interesting that we end up doing the same volume except for alcohol. So when did you open Burger 21? Was that, After I mean, was a very long negotiation with Winrock because it's really hard <laughs> to get into these malls. Uh, I opened it in October of 18. Okay. So, so, and, and, we're not going to get into the pandemic much, but, but that was kind of a nice hedge your bet for a uh, pandemic, you know, because oh. we've been shut down mm-hmm. to a big degree here in New Mexico and, and I'm sure the melting pot has suffered and hopefully burger 21 was that second model that is going to, is, has kept you going. Yeah, no, it, you- it's, it really worked. For that, for that reason, because you have to have an insurance policy in your back pocket. Yeah. But also I saw that the whole to-go 
and curbside pickup thing was really going to become big. And at Melting Pot, it's very, we're doing to go now out of necessity, um, but people want to do it as an experience. And for Burger 21, it's much more easy. It's easy to take it to go. So I saw those trends coming as well. And thank goodness we were on the forefront of that. Yes, that's that's good timing and, and bless you for that. <laughs> so um, let's 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 pretend people have not been to Albuquerque. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a traveler coming through. And the the beauty of it is if you're coming on I-25 or I-40, um, it's just a hop, skip and a jump right off the road. Right. So. If you're coming on I-40, you take the Louisiana exit and same with uh, I-25, you would um, take the I-40 exit going east and then take the Louisiana exit and uh, going north, correct? Yep. Okay. And the great, I mean, the thing, the great thing is, and this is why I chose these locations, um, you can shop, you know, you can go to a movie. There's, there's so many businesses that are in that neighborhood. Um, there's an Apple store. There's just so much that you can do in the neighborhood because the other thing is one of the reasons I moved the melting pot from old town was that's what the guest wants. Now they want to go to a movie. Then they want to have a burger and a shake, and then they want to maybe drop into their office or they want to do more. They want to go to the Apple store and drop the phone off to, to be fixed. So guests are, in my opinion, really looking for a one-stop shop. And that's one of the main reasons I moved the melting pot from old town to uptown. Well, I have to say, you know, I am, am now in uptown. We go to that uh, corner of Burger 21 and, and, and just choose a restaurant because there's a quite mm -hmm. a few restaurants in there. We went to Burger 21 last time and it was fabulous. Had a, a great burger on a salad. It was really, really good. Um, and, and so, yes. And the reason we do that is because we don't want to make a decision, right? You, you don't want to make the decision necessarily until you get right there. And then it's like, well, that looks good. Let's try that. Um, well, you know, what's nice about that too, Carol is most of those other restaurants with me and they call it the shops at the corner at Winrock are mostly local. There's one that's yes. not, but otherwise they're yes. all local owners as well. Yes. You know, and that's something that I, I do want to mention is, is that, even though, you know, these are franchised restaurants, you're local, you own them, you're local. Not much of that money goes back to corporate, right? Mm -mm. You know, all my, I mean, my general, all of my employees are local. All of my vendors, I'm just trying to think, everyone that I use is local. So I do have to pay royalties back to corporate, but I'm a New Mexico employer. I pay my taxes. I live here. I pay my taxes here. Yes. And, and, and we need those restaurants, you know, I mean, they they are those concepts that, that keep us on the cutting edge. They are those, you know, the ones that have grown and, and are throughout the nation. And, and I'm really proud to have a melting pot in New Mexico, honestly, <laughs> thank you for bringing it here. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure burger 21 is going to be, is going to be the same. Um, so, so talk to me about the food at the melting pot. Pretend I've never been there. Pretend uh, like the person on on this podcast has not been to a melting pot. It's such a great experience. Talk about it. Well, it's it's that's what we provide is a dining experience. You know, our mission is to provide the perfect night out to our guests. So we tell folks the best experience is to have all four courses. So make sure you come hungry, uh, and then we start you off with cheese fondue. So all of our cheeses are made by Roth, Roth Case in Wisconsin. We have specific melting pot blends that we contract with them for. I think they've been around for 50 or 100 years. It's, it's a family business. And uh, we have about six cheese fondues that you can choose from. We, well, we used to make it table side, but now we make the cheese fondue in the back. We think that's safer for everyone. And then we serve your cheese fondue with breads, um, it's, oh my God, the melting pot bread is so good. So two different types of bread and fresh vegetables um, and some fresh fruits we ser serve the cheese fondue with. And people always say, oh, but I can just make it at home. You really want to make cheese fondue over a double boiler. And we have, um, you know, microwave technology for the burners that keeps it at the perfect temperature, but after 20, 25 minutes, it's going to not be at its best. So we make sure that it's perfect when we serve it to you. So we start with cheese fondue, and then we have a choice of dinner salads. 
got to get your, you know, some healthiness in there. Right. And then um, I get your greens. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people take the sales home, but then your main entree, we have you choose from five different cooking styles uh, and anything from, well, we added the grill to make it more healthy. You have, there's oil, which is tr uh, traditional, even though it's canola. And then we have three different broth uh, versions of broth that you can cook your main entree in. So we bring your main entree to your table uncooked. We don't like to say raw. We like to say uncooked. <laughs> And then uh, we get, we have fondue forks. And so then you skewer your uncooked proteins or your vegetables, and then you let them cook in your broth or oil or on the grill for around two minutes. Uh, on your phone, you can get a fondue timer. Reality is except in oil while well, on the grill too. You can't really overcook it. So the longer it cooks, the more flavor it absorbs. Then we have six dipping sauces that we're going to give you to dip your cooked proteins and cooked vegetables in. And then of course, what we're really known for is chocolate fondue for dessert. So we get our chocolate from Purados um, and Purados is, uh, I think they're, what is the right name for it? They, they have like an organic or ethics certification, which we actually changed companies a few years ago when we pay 25% more to make sure that the farmers of the cacao beans are treated fairly and they can make a living off of selling their uh, cacao beans to Curados. So you have a choice of white milk, or dark chocolates. And then sometimes we mix in caramel. Sometimes we mix in chambord. Sometimes we mix in nuts. We do cordials in there, marshmallow fluff, whatever it be. We have all kinds of options to choose from. Uh, sometimes we even light it on fire for you because that's pretty fun. <laughs> and then uh, we give you fruits and cakes to, uh, again, you skewer those and dip them in chocolate. And it's all about serving it at the perfect temperature in that double boiler. So the chocolate is at its best. Nice. Oh my God. My mouth is watering. Um, <laughs> and, and like I say, my, my daughter's um, again, every time we had something to celebrate, we, we were there and they absolutely adore it. And I have to tell you, you know, I was inspired by the melting pot years ago, even before it was here in, in New Mexico, um, I went to Spain. I saw this great fondue pot. I bought it. I brought it back. I have, I have that thing under my cabinet and I've had it under my cabinet for, oh, 20 years now. And I've never brought it out. Uh, you know, it's if so I think hard. about fondue, I, it's so hard. So I just, so if I think about fondue and I want it, I go to melting pot. Right? My yeah. friends ask me, my friends would always ask me, can you bring fondue? I'm like, I can't make fondue on your stove and I'm not going to lug everything along. It's, it's a lot of work. So it can be done at home. It's just not as good. Yeah. And, and, you know, the worst part is getting the cheese off of the dish, you know, uh -huh. cleaning it out. So uh -huh. well, let the restaurant do that. That's what I always say. You know, we do clean those fondue pots by hand. To your mm -hmm. point, we have to chisel out the cheese and we've never come up with a great tool to do it. So it's still one of those old fashioned things. It just has to be cleaned by hand. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, so so let's move on to Burger 21 because that is a new concept and it's mm -hmm. especially fairly, very new for, new for New Mexico and Albuquerque. So uh, let's talk about that. Tell me, Tell me what else is on the menu. I did bring my husband something home the other day and he really enjoyed it. It was a Cajun burger. Oh, the, the, yeah. The Bayou oh, burger. Yeah. That, that looked fabulous. And I didn't see it until after I had ordered or I might. That have is that. our LTO. One of that's our most popular LTO that we bring back every year. So let me tell you a little bit about how that um, franchisor came up with Burger 21. So I'd said earlier, they were looking for a complimentary, not competitive business for melting pot. And they wanted to capitalize on the trends of, in theory, you know, farm to table, which is very difficult to execute, especially when people have one hour for lunch. Um, they knew the burger category was somewhat crowded. So they wanted to come up with, a, like I'd said before, a gourmet burger experience, not at the gourmet price. And they wanted something that every or everything was made to order, except the black bean burger. That's the and the impossible that we get, um, from the impossible company. So they worked. Mark Johnston is the owner now of Burger Twenty One. 
Him and his wife worked for two years on 21 burger recipes. That's why it's Burger 21. And all of the beef we get from Wolverine and it's all Angus and it's a special mix that comes from, from Wolverine. And the food is delicious. So I never really even thought about doing that franchise until I dined at their first location in West Chase in Florida. And I was blown away by the food. And I thought, oh, they just rolled out the red carpet because they know I'm a melting pot franchisee, that I know the systems and the people. It's just a fluke. But then every time I went back to Florida for melting pot meetings, I would go to Burger 21 and the food was consistently terrific. So um, it took them two years to come up with the recipes. And then they were smart. They built one store, they built two stores, they had built three stores, they built four stores. So they had four of their own stores before they started to actually franchise. And another appeal to me, besides the food was terrific and there was not a lot of competition that I saw in Albuquerque, was it's a small franchise. So there's, I mean, and they want you to be a multiple unit owner. So that's their goal. They tell you one unit is not going to do it for you. You need to have multiple units for, for it to make sense. So there's probably only six or seven franchisees. Of course, I'm the only woman. <laughs> Melting pot, I think I'm one of three female franchisees. Um, but anyway, so then I loved the food. And there's 21 different types of burgers. Everything is made to order. The shakes are hand spun. So we get a special dairy mix from our, our uh, purveyor and we hand spin all of the shakes. Have you had the shakes, Carol? I have not. No, oh. I'm not they, indulging right now. They're, it, it is a treat. They are ridiculous. Uh, we have a banana foster, salted caramel, chocolate peanut butter. And then uh, right now to go with the bayou, we had the red velvet cake. But then we also have chicken tenders. We have fresh salads. We have sweet potato fries and regular fries. Um, and then part of what we do is every, we will offer an LTO four times a year. So we do it 60 days on and then we pull it off and we about concurrently run a feature shake. So the Bayou burger, chicken patty with andouille sausage, shrimp mixed in, and then we make the sauces that go on top as well. That only runs for two months our most popular, and then we pair the red velvet cake shake with it. And then it goes away. And then our next feature is going to be the Caprese burger, something a little bit more summer oriented. But the food's terrific. And the other interesting thing is, so out of everything bad comes something good. So the mall would never give me curbside because they didn't want to have to give everyone spots. And I begged them when I signed the lease, I said, this is the way of the future. No, 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 we have to do all our properties, we can't do it. Well, pandemic came and then they said, ooh, yep, everyone needs virtual spots. Because you probably know this, but the average person doesn't, we cannot have drive-throughs in ABQ Uptown. So that's not an option to have a drive-through, but now they've given us curbside spots. We have three at Burger 21 constantly filled. Constantly. Yeah. And I had no idea that you couldn't have that, but that does make sense. I I know that more and more people are going out against drive-throughs just because of the traffic it causes. I don't, I don't know that there's any, I don't, I don't know that that argument's good, but it's there, right? Yeah. And I don't see how the difference is with the virtual pickup spots. I mean, I'm actually thinking about putting a pickup window on my patio at Burger 21, just to make it as easy as possible for the guests. So we'll see, we'll see. But but to go and third party um, and curbside has become when we don't have indoor is obviously the biggest portion of the business. And so it's becoming a norm for people. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, well, um, it is. And, and I do think that there's a lot of uh, pent up, uh, demand. And I think people are going to be coming back into restaurants. Uh, You know, this is, this whole thing is winding down. We're, we're getting some good uh, information and the vaccine is working and fingers crossed. We never have to do this again. Um, And, and for a while, I think people will come back to restaurants, but I think they've gotten also very comfortable, you know, um, having food delivered, having food uh, to go. And, and so that's going to be a mainstay as well. I think hopefully um, everybody's really tired of cooking for themselves. <laughs> and I know I am, and I'm very tired of doing my own dishes. So I am, I'm ready to get back into restaurants um, and, and make that happen. 
So you know, the research that I've looked at does say that niche restaurants like Melting Pot that give an experience that cannot be recreated elsewhere is really who's going to thrive um, in the next couple of years. And I see that. I mean, we we can only seat 15 tables inside right now at Melting Pot, and we have four dining chalets outside that we put that we did uh, because of the pandemic. And on Saturday, mm, I mean, if you don't call right now for Friday or Saturday for my for Melting Pot, you're not going to get in. It, it is to your point. There is a lot of pent up demand out there. Yeah, I think people are really ready to be back. Um, so, so with that said. I want people to know how they can find your restaurants. And we have already talked about the location, but let's say they're looking online. Um, give us some, some directions for that. So um, they're both pretty simple. Melting Pot is meltingpot.com slash Albuquerque, or just hit meltingpot.com. It'll take you to Albuquerque. I would ask guests to please reserve through our website versus open table. I mean, we'll take, we'll take people's business and show them a great time either way, but the cost is less to us. If you, if you reserve through our website, uh, we've also on melting pot been very, you know, very descriptive about the experience and what the menu is, because what we've found is we are so overwhelmed by phone calls right now. It is very difficult for us to get to the phone. And the best way is to reserve online. Not that we don't want people to call, but they're going to have to, you know, we're, we're really busy, unusually busy. So meltingpot.com backslash Albuquerque. Oh, and also for melting pot, we did add to go. So if you can't get in or you just want cheese and chocolate, and you've got a craving, you can do it for to go. Um, you can either use our curbside, pick it up inside, or we're doing business with admi.com which I know you're familiar with, Carol, but Adney is a local delivery service that actually charges us a fair delivery charge that allows both Adney and ourselves to, to make a profit and to keep people employed. Nice. Uh, and then for Burger 21 is just burger21.com. Um, you, can, you can call your order in. If I were you though, I'd order. you can order and pay online at Burger 21. It's so easy. And then you can pick it up or you could do curbside. Or again, you can use admi.com. I would make a plea to all of my fellow citizens out there and food lovers, third party delivery services, um, while we loved them during the pandemic, they charge us 30%. And restaurants run at a five to, to five to 10% profit. So the third parties do not keep us in business. But admi.com will do everything that the third parties will do. So that's a plug for them if you want delivery. No, I really appreciate that too, because, you know, I, and, and I, I don't talk down about the delivery services because, you know, we've got this symbiotic relationship. Uh, it's a bit of a, a, a you know, mistletoe relationship, you know, um, they kind of feed off of us and, and where we need them, we need them, but also it is an expense and the same with, with open table. So anytime you can, you can make that reservation online without going to open table, it just, um, it leaves more money in the pocket of the restaurant. And that's what we need right now. So I appreciate you Agreed. mentioning both of those things. Um, so is there anything else you want to tell folks about your restaurants, about you? Hmm. Um, you know, I, I've been in Albuquerque for almost 20 years now, and I love it here. I, I'm from the Midwest originally. I lived in Chicago and St. Louis, and that's where um, I was born in Chicago, moved to St. Louis for my job, lived there for 13 years, and then I came out here, and I love it. Um, it's, I, I hope that Albuquerque is where, is my forever home. Um, I am, I would like to find a second location for Burger 21, um, I'll just have to kind of see how the whole, how things shuffle out commercial real estate wise post pandemic, because I don't know, are people going to work at home? Are they going to stay? Are they going to keep coming to ABQ uptown? And I'm just not sure what's going to happen, but I do love it here. And I consider myself a local. And like you said earlier, franchises are not evil. I mean, they, they really, the only money I send out of state is some royalties that I pay to them. Uh, on Melting Pot Burger 21, I've added patios uh, recently. So Melting Pot, we have four dining chalets. Well, we have five. 
We had eight until the big winds came oh, no. right on Valentine's, but they're really cool. So if guests are still concerned, they haven't been vaccinated or they're, you know, they're just not ready to come in contact with people. We, they're beautiful. If you go to our Facebook page, um, you'll see, we have these great dining chalets that are very private. So you can get multi pop. Burger 21, I just enclosed my patio with the sale like material mm -hmm. and we're going to be adding Brahmic heaters and you can enter, um, you can enter the patio without having to go through the restaurant. So again, if people don't feel comfortable dining in inside, they have options. Nice. And then um, I'm working, I'm just waiting for ABQ Uptown to sign off on our lease extension. And my next plan is to add a patio to totally renovate my patio at Melting Pot. It, it's gonna look awesome. I just, as soon as I can get that lease extension signed and the landlord, they just have a couple more details to work out. I'm gonna start um, on my renovation there. Nice, beautiful. And it is a, a beautiful location too. And like you say, I mean, it's right there with all the shopping. Um, you know, uh, it's one of those outdoor malls that has great music playing all the time. and and just places to hang out. So it, it is a wonderful location. Um, so thank you so much, Chris, for being here. Um, and thank you also to our generous sponsors, U.S. Foods, Cisco, New Mexico, Shamrock Foods, Heartland Payment Systems, the Food Industry Self-Insurance Fund, and Benny Keith Foods for their annual sponsorship of NMRA and its programs. Visit nmrestaurants.org to learn more about our Chef Table sponsors, and thanks for tuning in to New Mexico Restaurants Now. You can watch this and other episodes on the New Mexico Restaurants Now YouTube channel. And you can subscribe to the audio podcast at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me.